slip rock, slip rock, slip rock, slip rock. That's that shit I like. Slip rock, slip rock, slip rock, slip rock, slip rock. Crip again. Ha, 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 ha. What up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of KM Videos True Stories. Break yourself, fool! Today's episode takes place in LA, LA County Jail, and it's about the homie Big Slip Rock. Slip Rock is an original Tiny Lope, born in 1965. He's off 67th and 6th Ave, and he was known for his fighting ability, but he was also known for hustling. And he held the hood down when a lot of the reptiles and the G's was gone. So Slip Rock, Slip Rock was like a leader to some of us because he was always leading the charge. Slip Rock, born in 65. He grew up south of the track, 707, where he started to grind. Between 67 and Florence, he got it going. In hood, cripping and watching our poor performance. In or around 1993, Slip Rock wants to go to Las Vegas. And he wants to know if I'm going to go with him. Of course, yeah, come scoop me. He comes and pick me up in his black LS. Sitting on black and gold Daytons with Vogue's on it. We shoot to Vegas. And at this time, I still got a credit line with the Stardust Hotel and Casino. A credit line means I could go gamble and I could just ask them to slide me 500, 1,000, 1,500. And they break me off with no problem. If they know me, they just give me the money and a check to sign. If they don't know me, they ask for my ID. Then they give me the check to sign. Slip Rock loves it, but we go to the crap table at the Stardust, and I tell you, everybody that worked at the crap tables, the pit boss, everybody knew me at this time. They didn't know Slip Rock. Slip Rock been to Vegas with me a few times, but they didn't know Slip Rock. And so I got gambler's etiquette. I know you pull out large bills, and I know you can play money. Back then, you could put your money on the table and say, let the money play. And I, I know the whole get down. I don't want to hold up the table, so I'm going to pull out large bills. Well, Slip Rock, on the other hand, he's pulling out dope money. And his money's not in sequence. So Slip Rock has this large chunk of money. Man, I thought Slip was coming with about 20 racks. Slip only got about four racks. And they in ones and fives and tens and raggedy twenties. I don't even think he had but probably 300 in hundred dollar bills. So Slip Rock is a little embarrassing to me. The people at the table are looking at me and looking at Slip Rock's money. And the shit just looked funny. And so I'm embarrassed. And he's holding up the table. So everybody's getting a little impatient. Because they want him to hurry up so they can shoot the dice. You know, crap, crap players are usually in a hurry. We in a rush to win or lose. We in a hurry to find that next hot shooter. And Slip is messing all that up. So Slip is, Slip is pulling out like 500 at a time, maybe 1,000, and putting it on the table. And he's miscounting. So when the guy, the stick man, picks up the money and counts out the money, He's saying things like $473, and Slip Rock said, oh, wait, 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 hold up, and pull out another $3. $894, wait, 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 hold up, he pull out another $6 or $106. And people are getting irritated with Slip Rock. Nevertheless, it's Kev Mack and it's Slip Rock, and it's the 1990s. We sprung as hell on backyard dice, we sprung as hell in the crap tape. And we lost, like we usually do. 
So we lose. We gamble all night. We lose. It's a turnaround. It's time to go back home. I done lost everything. I ain't even got enough money to make a phone call. Slip Rock got just enough money for gas. And that might not even be enough. We might not even make it back to L.A. So we fuel up. We jump in the L.S. And we're going to shoot back to the hood. And we rolling. We having good conversation. We laughing about how we lost our money and how stupid we feel and all that old stuff. How we going to get back and all this and how much money we probably missed by leaving the hood. All that old type of stuff. Uh, we not mad. We not upset or nothing. We might be goat mouth. We might look stupid, but we good. We good. And good conversation all the way to the house. Now we on the 10 freeway headed west. And we about to approach Arlington, the Arlington exit. And as we approach the Arlington exit, there's this LAPD helicopter above. Somewhere around Crenshaw, Crenshaw exit and the 10 freeway. And we just keep rolling. I, I don't see nothing. I don't hear nothing. Slip obviously don't see nothing or hear nothing. And we pass up Arlington and we get off on Crenshaw. Bust a left turn on Crenshaw. Bust a left turn was on Crenshaw. We're like the real live six in the morning. Bust a left turn was on Crenshaw. Man, helicopters right above us. We see a police car, highway patrol. And then we go ahead and we proceed across Adams. We cross Adams, headed south. Slip Rock say, damn, cuz! You gotta know Slip Rock to really picture that sound and that expression on his face. I'm like, what? He said, somebody going to jail. I'm like, really, who? He said, man, I don't know, but it's a whole lot of police behind us. So I look around, man, it's about 12 police cars behind us, just that fast. It's almost like the helicopter and the police they were waiting on us. Like, they done ran his plates or something and knew we was going to exit Crenshaw. So they waiting on us, and now they behind us. Slip Rock is calm, though. Like, he was excited when he said somebody's going to jail. But now he's nice and calm. And he looks at me, and he said, Cuz, you got any warrants? I'm like, shit, I don't think so. And then he taps me on my leg, and he said, Cause did you do something wrong? I'm like, if I did, they wouldn't know I'm in your car. He like, fuck. Slip Rock was the type of homie that he let everybody come in and out of his house. He helped people out. He loaned people money. He whatever. So this one particular time, him and Lil No Good was real tight. And he would let No Good borrow his car. He let No Good borrow his car on like two occasions. So no good got Slip Rock's car. Ain't nothing strange about that. They tight. They getting a little bit of paper together. They hang out together. Grew up not far from each other. So that's their thing. That's cool. There's nothing out the ordinary. That would be like me loaning the car to one of my homies that I'm real tight with, that I grew up with. The homie no good wasn't necessarily the straightest arrow in the hood. No good was into a lot of different things as far as getting money. And I don't really mean selling work, but he's getting money. Now, as we cross rodeo, still headed south to the hood, the police hit the sirens and the helicopter's telling us to pull over, exit the car. We pull over, me and Slip don't get out the car though. Police draw down, they run up to my window, the Slip Rock's window. It's a felony stop, obviously. But back then, you could get a felony stop and not even done anything wrong. But this is a felony stop. And me and Slip, we confused. We don't know what the hell is going on or why. And Slip Rock pulls over right before you get to Dewiner Snitzel. We get to Dewiner Snitzel, and now you see all kind of gang members pulling up to Dewiner Snitzel looking and shit. And they get us up out the car. They sit me on the curve. They get Slip Rock out. They sit him on the curve. And me and Slip are talking like, man, what's going on? So finally, 
Police tell me, get my ass up and go. So I'm gonna walk over to this Dewiner Snitzel and I start walking over there and I notice, oh shit, these ain't no homies or nothing over here. Them niggas was Damus over there. Like, it seemed like of all days, everybody from the 20s to the 50s was on Crenshaw. That helicopter or them S hats brought the Damus out. I didn't have no incidents, but I had a couple dudes hit me up. A couple dudes hit me up. I tuck and roll into the old make company. Come back up out of make company. Walk the rest of the way home. Get by the Crenshaw wall. Get hit up a few more times. I didn't want to go up Stalker because they probably see me on the way up Stalker. So I, I take Crenshaw all the way to the house. Hoping I see some homies or somebody that's kin to me and get a rod. They take the homie Slip Rock to jail. Word in the streets is Slip Rock's in jail for a bank robbery. I'm like, damn, a bank robbery? When did Slip rob a bank? Like, that ain't even Slip's M.O. Shortly after, I find myself in the county jail. Now, I'm in the county jail, and I'm coming from a visit. And I see this dude named Brown in the hospital, and he said, yeah, Mac. And I look. I'm like, Slip, what's up, homie? So I go to the hospital, talking to Slip Rock, shake his hand, all that old shit. What you in for? I'm in for bank robbery, cuz. I'm like, damn, cuz, what bank you rob? He's like, cuz, I ain't rob no bank. And so I go on back upstairs and shit. Slip Rock was a diabetic, so that's why he was in the hospital. And people in the hospital generally wear brown. That's why he was in a brown suit, brown outfit. So now here comes our court date. We got a court date on the same day. So as we headed to court, they put you in them transfer cells, and I see the homie Slip Rock. And I'm like, Slip, what's up, cuz? He's like, yeah, Mac, what's up, cuz? He said, cuz, they trying to give me seven years. I'm like, damn, homie. I'm like, I hope you beat that shit. He's like, cuz, I don't even know what they talking about. I don't know how they putting this on me, man. I ain't robbed no bank. Slip Rock, I'm not the DA, man. I'm not the prosecutor. You tell them that shit. And Slip Rock laughs at me. And we go on. I go on to court. Obviously, Slip Rock goes to court. Now we coming back from court. And the very last cell, before you go upstairs, it's in inmate reception center. And I'm walking past the cell, and I see Slip Rock. I'm like, Slip, what's up, cuz? He's like, Kevin, yeah, man. I said, man, what, what you doing in them yellows? He said, oh, some dude told me that he wanted to switch outfits. And these is fresh. These is new. I had on some raggedy brown, so I switched with him. I'm like, cuz, yellow's for the dings. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, man, don't nobody wear yellow but crazy motherfuckers. And Slip Rock said, oh, man, when I see that motherfucker, I'm going to get off him. I'm going to beat his ass. I'm like, damn, Slip, you didn't know that? He said, no, nah, cuz, I didn't know that. I just thought he was fresh. Man, i never forget that. Like, that was like a shocking, embarrassing-ass moment right there. So I guess a ding to trick slip up out his clothes and shit. Then he tell me, the fool asked him to switch wristbands. I said, no, I ain't no way. He's like, yeah, cuz want to switch wristbands. Man, you a damn fool, Slip. So anyway, I go on about my business. Later on, Slip Rock ends up beating the case. Because when he goes to trial, they blow up his picture, and the guy that robbed the bank had like a bald spot in his head. Slip Rock didn't have a bald spot in his head. So that's how he ended up beating the case. He did like 14, 16 months in there fighting the case. And when he get out, I asked him what happened. He said, cuz, I lit no good near my car one day, and them fools went and robbed the bank. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that's a cold twist. Big Slip Rock passed in 2009 from diabetes, and the homie Baby Slip and some of the homies put together one of the biggest and best funerals from the hood. And it's the first time I really remember Nipsey showing up and paying homage to a big homie that's resting in peace. Big Slip Rock, rest in peace. The moral of today's story is, be careful who you loan your car to. And that's going to do it for today's episode of KM Videos True Stories. I appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to hit the like button or leave a comment. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe.
If you a sucker and you like stealing my content, please act like Nell Carter and give me a break. I'm out of here, y'all. Much love. Salute. Sitting reminiscent